Hey gang, Mel here. So in this Q&A video, we're going to talk about uh, a question that I got about what do I think about these picture-in-picture -picture overlay videos that I do in my screencasts. We'll talk about that here. Okay, so I had a great question from one of the students in the Digital Know How course, and I do have permission to share this with all of you all. So he started the course uh, recently and uh, also comments that I made a choice uh, about you know, presenting videos, it's picture in picture video in my courses, and I explain in the course, in one of the uh, lectures in the course, is that by doing so I create an atmosphere of learning you know, together with the students and so, and so forth. But he's wondering um, if it isn't distracting at the same time because we humans are attracted to faces and eyes especially, and I agree with that. And he, he understands too that you know the more social way of teaching in this manner is more engaging. And you know what do I think about all of that stuff? So this is a great question. Like many presentation styles, there are a variety of approaches that I think can be effective. And the main thing is that we keep trying different techniques and keep reflecting on feedback that you get from your learning network. So it's in that sense that my thoughts about this is in constant evolution. Just as I try different techniques every time I teach a live class or a workshop, I also try different techniques in my online video presentations. But no matter what I try, in all cases, I like to think that my choices are guided by a desire to keep the learners and the viewers engaged by having something moving on the screen about every five to 10 seconds, maybe 30 seconds on the outside. Also, my choices about how I include picture in picture in my screencast is also influenced by desire to make each presentation as much like the feel of a classroom environment. If you think about it, in a classroom, the teacher is always visible, right? So the teacher doesn't have the luxury of visually fading out, although sometimes some of the lectures that we've attended can certainly feel like that would probably benefit it, right? But my point is that more often than not, there's a benefit to seeing the instructor. You and I, as students in a live classroom, often take our visual cues from the nonverbal gestures and so on of the teacher or the facilitator as much as we would from the verbal. But the question about how best to translate all that into a live classroom, from a live classroom to a video context, that's an ever-evolving challenge and one that I think that far too many teachers actually don't do well. For example, too many online teachers, I think, go too far the other way. That is, they display no picture-in-picture -picture overlay at all and rely exclusively on PowerPoint presentation recordings and pure voiceovers. Now, I'm not saying that's wrong because you only have to go as far as a site like lynda.com to see how effective pure voiceover instructional content can be. But my experience, too, is that in far too many pure voiceover style instructional videos, especially from folks who are trying this for the first time, is that the facilitator relies almost exclusively on PowerPoint and voiceover and ends up becoming far too removed from the learner. And in a way, I think that ends up sort of robbing the learner of nonverbal cues and facial expressions that can otherwise enhance the learning environment. Now, I have some thoughts about what makes for an effective picture-in-picture -picture overlay that I'll probably follow up with later. But for many of those uh, who are in any of my online courses now, you can catch my thoughts about that in the introductory lecture about the picture-in-picture -picture overlay. In the meantime, I'd love to hear your thoughts about all of this. So for videos that you've seen that uses a picture-in-picture -picture type of uh, overlay, from the teacher, what is it that you did or didn't like about that in general? And if you like pure voiceover videos, is there something specific that you can point to that makes them particularly effective? Go ahead and post those in the comments below. And if this is your first time here, make sure and uh, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button if you like the video. And uh, of course, if you want more of this kind of stuff, uh, you can visit digitalknowhow.com. Uh, make sure you include the, the dashes in there and uh, just click that button over there and uh, find out a little bit more about the, the topics list. See you next time.